And I knew that the pin wasn't gonna hit for nothing when I seen that matches on the floor. Hey y'all, it's Nisi Dixon. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, welcome. If you are returning y'all, welcome back. I'm like giving y'all a whole virtual hug. I don't know why it feels like it's been so long since I've seen y'all. I uploaded a video on Sunday and it's only Tuesday and I'm like, dang, I ain't talked to y'all in a minute. So welcome back y'all. Thank you for returning. Today, as you can tell by the title of the video, we are about to review a brand new show called Run the World that comes on Stars. I have been hearing a little bit about this show. I feel like it was geared towards people who were like obsessed with Insecure because I was like in this insecure group on Facebook. Let me know if you're in that group because that group used to be lit once upon a time. Definitely during the season it's lit. But since we had a whole year off, it's been kind of dry. But anyway, in the Facebook group, people were talking about Run the World. So I was like, let me, let me go ahead and check this out. And y'all, I am pleased to say that I'm impressed with the show so far. It's definitely given me um some insecure vibes some sex in the city vibes and when i say that y'all i've never watched sex in the city like i was a kid when that show was on so i know a lot of people love that show but i've seen like you know bits and pieces enough to tell y'all that that's what it was and i know it's from the creators of living single so it's probably even better than sex in the city and with that being said i need to watch some living single as well because that's another show where i've seen like bits and pieces but not really the whole Thing, okay so really this episode really allowed us to get to know the characters so I'm gonna go through talk character by character and then we're gonna talk about what happened we'll see we'll see so without further ado y'all let's go ahead and get into the episode run the world on stars season one episode one all right y'all so the first two characters that we are introduced to is Ella and Brene Renee is funny AF y'all <laughs> like I knew I was gonna like her when she was down for the bodega talking about um calling that woman a colonizer okay acting like the invisible woman that's when I knew I was gonna like her so it seems like the ladies went out the night before the next morning Renee is calling Ella on the phone telling her you're gonna be late for work we find out in that conversation that Ella is 25 I think 26 and this is her brand new job so she's rushing to her job um while Renee is at the bodega she's telling this woman I'm not invisible and when she said that I was like I feel you on that y'all it was this article I read where it was saying that like as a black person you should intend to take up space because you don't realize how much of our history um still plays out you know and when I when I say it like that I don't like to dig y'all but when I say it like that I mean for example um go stand somewhere and i don't know if it's just a southern thing and pay attention to how many people say excuse me or how many people acknowledge when they're in your way i think they expect you to move and one day i actually tested it out y'all i stood there i stood there and it was awkward but let it get awkward so shout out to renee for that so renee is down to the bodega she's getting her sandwich it looks like she's going to work and the reason why i say that renee is the comic relief is because i feel like we have gotten to know the least amount of information about her from this episode so ella gets to her job and y'all we get a surprise visit from maxine from living single she is her boss and it appears that ella is a writer I was like, okay, she's a writer for Complex or something because I'm looking at the pictures in the background. Come to find out she's a writer for some place called Hot Tea Digest. And basically she begged Maxine for the job. Sounded like something when her old job didn't work out. But this is kind of something that Ella is taking for the time being. So she's tasked with the event of going to go find Soldier Boy so she can write an article on Soldier Boy. And immediately Ella's just like, oh, this nigga, Soulja Boy, oh. But like Renee, I'm like, girl, Soulja Boy might be a little bit lame, but Soulja Boy is a legend. Don't play, y'all. I have a picture of myself. I literally called myself the first lady of SO, what is it, SOG Money Gang or S? I forgot the name, y'all. I would insert the picture, but I'm not about to embarrass myself like that, y'all. So anyway, <laughs> y'all. She doesn't want to go interview Soldier Boy, but she ends up doing it anyway, okay? So now we go from learning a little bit about Ella, learning a little bit about Renee, to now learning about Sandy. Sandy, okay? 
the first scene we get with her is her having sex with her man. And I'm like, okay, why are they trying to be quiet? Are they in community living? Do they have a like roommates? What is it? But it seemed like they were really feeling each other. It was a nice little sex scene, y'all. Um, so yeah, they were doing that. And I was like, oh, well, maybe they have kids. Come to find out that's not Sandy's daughter. Sandy is involved with her, one, I think a professor or something. And she's one of his like TAs essentially. She's been in him and his daughter's life for the past two years. And she's essentially become the girl's mom. So I'm like, okay, ain't this a storyline? Each of these women have very interesting storylines. And I know that it's going to um, bring about a lot of conversation throughout the season. So she's playing mom, you know, what they be saying, acting like a wife without the title. Y'all know what they be saying. And she's taking the girl to ballerina practice. She's very much pro-black. And she wants the little girl as a ballerina to not wear pink slippers, but to wear brown slippers for her brown skin. So she takes the girl to her ballet uh, practice. And when she's there, she is sticking out like a sore thumb. None of the other little girls are brown. The other black mom that is there is there with a mixed child. It's like she black like this and not like that. Like what Funky Donnie would be saying. <laughs> Shout out to him. But yes, so obviously... When she picks the girl up, she realizes that she never wore her brown slippers. So she's like, uh, we not about to do that. So while she's there, she immediately becomes aggravated with the place and she wants her future stepdaughter, or I don't even know what to call her y'all because it's a sticky situation, but she wants her to be around other people who look like her, which is no problem to me. On the other hand of things, we get the little girl's actual father, Matthew, who is Sandy's boyfriend. And he's saying, well, she's just six years old. Quit trying to make everything into a um, pro-black statement. Just let her be a kid. And y'all, I get where he's coming from, but I definitely have to agree with Sandy on this one. You need to wear your brown slippers to match your brown skin. Like, I don't, I don't know. I would advocate for my child to wear the brown slippers to be proud and not kind of want to fit in with everybody else. I also think that if you want her to embrace who she is as a black person, she should be enrolled in classes with other black girls. However, y'all, Sandy is just a girlfriend. So this is the sticky situation that I'm talking about. So then we get into the bougie friend, y'all. It's always somebody like that in a group. It's different dynamics among the four women. Her name is Whitney. You know she's bougie because she's sitting there riding her Peloton bike. She got money, y'all. She's getting a call from her work on her watch, and then she's talking to her mom. And we find out that she is engaged and in the process of planning a wedding. So when she meets with her girls, she's talking about the wedding and how her mom wants to invite all these people. Come to find out her fiancé is Nigerian, and they've been together for a long, long, long time. And keep in mind, y'all, they're in their mid-20s. <laughs> and I'm like, this is so funny, okay? This is so funny. So anyway, the girls meet up at their spot. And this is whenever Ella says, hey, I'm going to the Soldier Boy party. I need to interview him. Does anybody want to come? Everybody decides to go except for Sandy. So we get Renee, Ella, and Whitney. And they go down out to the club. And they are looking for Soldier Boy. So the bougie girl, Whitney, she's like, oh, I want champagne. I want champagne. And then she runs into a guy at the bar. And as soon as I saw her looking at the dude at the bar, I was like, oh, Whitney, you're not getting married. Girl, you are not getting married. You are flirting with the man at the bar and you definitely doing a little bit too much with the eyes. And that's when Ella tells her, girl, that's community peen. We all didn't have him. He has the best peen, so go for it. And she says, well, I guess I missed the opportunity to go for it because I spent all my 20s cooking and cleaning and doing all this for my college boyfriend. And I was like, damn. But this is definitely real life-ish, y'all. This is definitely real life-ish. We get Sandy, who is overstepping the girlfriend role. We get Whitney, who has always been a wife and never really got to be out there and explore. Then we get Ella, who's very career focused. She seems to be the fave. And Renee is just funny AF. She on the dance floor. She's hyped, ready to meet Soulja Boy. So they make their way to the section and they're immediately turned away. Come to find out, 
there's an Asian dude. I don't know his name, y'all. I'm going to call the Asian dude Andrew. <laughs> and y'all know I'm getting that name from Insecure. Andrew had interned with Ella in the past and he had been trying to get with her. So he says, yeah, they good. Come on to the section. And Soulja Boy goes, nope, y'all don't look enough like the Instagram hoes. So you can't get back here. And that's what, that was basically what Ella's article was about. So Ella goes to the bathroom. She runs into her ex or something along those lines. They don't say exactly who he was to her, but she runs into this Latina, a Latina, Latin lover, y'all, um, by the name of Anderson. And they lock eyes and it's just like crazy chemistry. She's like, you were out of the country. Now you're back. You didn't tell me you were back. You didn't hit me up. And they kiss. And Renee is all out calling this man Satan. So whatever happened between them ended badly. Out of, I guess, trying to get this Anderson dude out of her system, she goes back and meets up with Andrew, the Asian dude that was choosing her, and decides to hook up with him for the night. They get to his apartment, y'all, and I knew that the pin wasn't going to hit for nothing when I seen that matches on the floor. I seen the matches on the floor, y'all. He had all his tennis shoes laid up on the side of the bed. I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. No, this was not it, girl. <laughs> and it didn't hit. He had whiskey pain. He couldn't He couldn't keep it up. So she goes home. She writes her article on Soldier Boy. And, you know, it's the number one article in her company at the time. So it seems like she is successful. She's a successful friend. She's the Joan, y'all. And Renee is definitely, uh, damn, what's her name? Is it Monica? Yes. So the next morning, y'all, we see Whitney, the bougie friend, and she wakes up in the bed with a community pin. So she has cheated on her fiance. And like I told y'all, old girl was not ready to get married when I seen her hanging at that bar for a little bit too long. So, you guys, I'm super excited about this show. I feel like I've been waiting a long time for something like this, some type of fix, y'all. I am deprived and I am desperately waiting for Insecure to come back. But something about like this mid-20s thing just makes me so excited, y'all. I'm like in the same stage of life as a lot of these women. I can see a lot of their viewpoints and I think this season is going to be one to talk about. So I hope y'all watch the episode. If you haven't, be sure to check it out. Run the world on stars. Comment below so we can have this, uh, some discussion and, you know, like, comment, subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.